disturbing, but I believe God's going to do something today. Amen. Luke 16. Amen. I want to speak to you on the subject this morning. It's not preached much in churches today. Amen. It's a subject that most people rather not talk about. It's a subject that most people rather not hear about. The message I'm going to preach to you this morning is six things. Six things you won't find in hell. Six things you won't find in hell this morning. Stand with me, if you will, for the reading of the Word of God, if you're able. If you're not, we understand. We're going to start reading Luke 16, starting at verse 19. And we're going to read through verses 24. Verse 19 says this, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue where I am tormented in this plane. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you today to come in a special way. Lord, I can't preach, never could preach. You know that. These people know that. God, I need your help today. Let the Holy Spirit come and do what needs to be done today. Lord, let me say those things that need to be said. God, for all that's done today, I know you'll bless it, you'll You'll honor it, and God, there'll be a result. There'll be a harvest. Lord, we're going to give you praise and honor ahead of time. In Jesus' name I pray. The church said, Amen. You may be seated this morning. You know, I get no pleasure this morning out of what I'm about to say to you. Amen. What I'm about to preach on is not to try to scare nobody into religion. Religion ain't going to get you nowhere. Amen. Religion ain't going to help you at all. Amen. That's a fact. But what you're about to hear this morning is the truth. The truth for a lost soul goes for me. But it be for eternity if they reject the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross. If they reject the blood that was shed on that cross, hell will be their home. Not for a day or two, but for eternity. And I wish to God this morning there was no place called hell. I just wish it wasn't there. Amen. I wish to God there was no, no horror like we're going to find as we read this story in this place called hell. And contrary to what man wants to believe, the Bible is clear. Any soul that rejects Jesus Christ, any soul that rejects the sacrifice of the Lord of hell, will wind up in this place called hell for eternity, forever and ever and ever. And I also want you to know this morning before I get started, God will one day show this world just how much He hates sin. That day is coming. God will judge this world. Amen. The reason many people think that, you know, I've heard people say this, well, God's a loving God and there's no way He would put a person in hell. But you got to understand something this morning. They, the people that say that think that God is like you and me. But God is not like you and me. God is a holy God, and we're not. We're unholy people. Hello? God is a righteous God, and the Bible says that we're unrighteous. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. The Bible tells us that there's no, none that is, has, that has not sin, no, not one. There's not one person in here that is righteous within themselves. Amen? 
But people think, well, God is such a person. And they try to think and say, well, God's like me. God's like you. But no way God is like me or God is like you. His thoughts are higher. His ways are higher. And one day, church, one day you can count on it. You can write it down. You can bank on it. God is going to judge sin. It's going to happen. Whether it's in your life or whether it's in my life, we will be judged for that sin. Amen? We're nothing like God. The truth this morning is this. God hates sin. He's made a way. Uh -huh. That sinful man can escape the horrors of this place called hell. And that way and the only way is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Through His sacrifice, His blood, He is the only way. And I know people have a problem with that today, but I'm not a new age preacher. I don't come up with new thoughts and new new theologies. I preach the book and the only way you're going to be saved is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You try any other way, you're going to wind up in this place I'm talking about today, this place called hell. If you choose to reject Him, the Word of God is plain. You will why up there? If we ever think we're okay because we do good, because we, we try to be all right, be aware, don't be deceived. I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of good people in hell right now that were doing good, Brother J.R. A lot of good people in hell right now thought they were okay. But if we could open up, if God would open up this three-dimensional world, let us look down into the portals of hell, you'd see good people. Good people that done good things, that lived a good life, lived good morally. Amen. Lived their life the best they knew how to do. But they rejected the sacrifice on the cross. They rejected Jesus Christ. And in so doing, now they spend eternity in hell. Being good will not keep you out of hell. Amen. Acting right, doing right will not keep you out of hell. The only way we'll ever escape the horrors of hell is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Now I want you to hold on because I'm going to preach this thing if it kills you. Amen? One day, church, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but one day our life on this earth is going to be over. They some of us right now we're getting closer and closer. Each passing day is drawing us closer to that time if the Lord don't come. We're going to die. We're going to leave this world. And if you think we're not, after service, you ride by the graveyard. There are people out there that thought I'm going to live on, they live on. But they're there. Their day came, our day will come also. And to those who stop this message, you can laugh at me all you want. Amen. You can laugh at this message all you want. Those that scoff the notion that hell is just something man made up just to scare somebody into doing right. I'm going to say to you this morning, one day you'll know the truth. One day you'll know the truth. Amen. Hell is real. Hell is still hot. It ain't changed degree. One I owe is simply because somebody don't believe it don't exist. Jesus said it was bad. Jesus went there and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He verifies that it's there. And I'm telling you right now, I believe the book. And when I go, I want to be ready to go. And I hope today when you go, you want to be ready to go. But should you go there this morning, church, or sometime in the near future, I want to warn you. There's six things you're not going to find in hell. Six things you're not going to find in hell. Number one, there'll be no laughter in hell. Verse 24 says that when the rich man opened his eyes in hell, he cried out. Amen. I'm telling you, we stood out here yesterday, Sister Beck, and I seen people laughing, and I see them enjoying themselves. Ain't nothing like hearing a little bit of laughter. Amen. 
They enjoyed themselves. They were just having themselves a good time. Amen. But the day's coming. I'm telling you right now that if we're not right with God and we have to enter into this place called hell, there'll be no laughter in that place. Amen. There'll be nothing but crying, screaming, torment, weeping, wailing, the Bible says, and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Think about what I'm telling you this morning. You may be sitting there saying, well, all the preacher's trying to do is scare us. And that's not what I'm trying to do this morning. I'm trying to warn you this morning that this place I'm talking about is very real. Amen. Jesus said it was there. And if Jesus said it, I believe it, church. Ain't nobody going to change my mind on it. I don't care if nobody believes it or not. Amen. This generation that we live, I believe it. And I want my soul ready when it goes to depart from this world into the next. I want to be ready for my eternal home. Amen. And I'm telling you, the Bible says there'll be no laughter in that place. Amen. Nothing but crying. Nothing but wailing and gnashing of Tea. How many of you, how many parents in here, and you'll know what I'm talking about. You got these babies when they was coming up. You got these little grandbabies that are here. We've all experienced that time when that little one wouldn't hush. That little one might have been sick. That little one might have been aggravated. Whatever the case may be, that young one just would not hush. Now listen to what I'm telling you. You can set all pious in the church if you want to, but you lost it. Amen. That baby wouldn't shut up. You just laid it down. You said, I can't take no more of this screaming. I can't take no more of this crying. I can't stand to hear it no more. And you've had to walk away from it and just leave that little one in another room. Come on. I ain't the only one that did this. Leave that little one in the other room and let them cry it out. Amen. But if you go to hell, if you ain't wind up in this place called hell, there's no getting away from the crying. There's no getting away from the weeping and the wailing and the gnashing of teeth. Uh, you'll be there throughout eternity. And all you'll hear are screams of agony. People crying out. People screaming at the top of their lungs. Not for a day or two. Not for a week or two. But for eternity. It'll never cease. It'll go forever and ever and ever. I don't know if you've ever thought about eternity today, but eternity is a time span that starts, but it'll never end. It'll start, but it'll never end. And if we go there today, church, you won't never laugh again. There'll never be another sound of laughter in that place. The only thing you're going to hear is crying and weeping and gnashing teeth. Amen. Church, I'm going to preach this thing to kill it. Number two, there'll be no water in hell. Hello? The rich man opened his eyes and he said, Father Abraham, please, send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger just into a, a, a cup of water. Just give me one drop. Just one drop to cool my tongue. Uh, we take water for granted, church. You know, this rich man, the Bible says he lived sumptuously every day. That don't mean for a, a day or two. That means every day of his life. He had whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted it, he had it. He wanted to throw the parties. He had whatever he wanted to drink right there. Had no problem getting it. Amen. He wanted something to drink. He, all he had to do was go over there and just get whatever it was he wanted to drink. Amen. And just drink it down and just cool his tongue. I tell you, through this hot summer, they were some hot days this year, church. <laughs> Say amen. They were some hot days this year. But I remember getting in that old truck, going out to work, and I'd have me four or five drinks sitting right there beside me. And any time I wanted to reach down and get me a cool drink, bless God, I could just reach and get it. And say, boy, it just felt so good going down. Amen. Just cool my tongue. Amen. Fix my parched throat. Amen. But the Bible says in hell, you won't even be able to get one drop of water. You won't be able to get nothing to quench your thirst. Nothing that will help your parched 
throat. The Bible says your tongue will be swelled and parched so much that you'll just be begging for water. Be begging for one drop of water in this place, but it'll never be found. It will not be there, church. Come on, we take it for granted this morning. We can go to any city. I can walk out there right now and just push a handle and get me a little bit of water to cool my tongue or to fix my old parched throat. We take it for granted. The rich man thought, well, I got it made. Everything's all right, but the day come when he couldn't go and get the drink that he was so used to. He couldn't go and get him something that would cool his tongue, fix his parched throat. The day come when he cried out for a drink of water. One drop of water. And Abraham said, no, it's not here. Amen. You're not going to find water in this place. Come on, man. Hello? Are you awake? You look awful solemn. My hope is hitting you this morning. You'll not find relief. Amen. You won't find it. Rich man looked at Lazarus and he said, I'm tormenting in these flames. I'm burning up. I'm tormented. I can't stand what I'm going through. You know, here on this earth, we've seen burn victims. We've seen them. Church, I know a boy that I grew up with. <coughs> Kenny Trample was his name. And he was in a fire. And bless God, when I went to school with him, you could still see the scars. His whole side, his face, everything was burned. But he wasn't hurt. He wasn't hurting. The doctors had some medication. Hello? They can do it now. So you get a burn victim. They got medication. They got shots. They got salve. They got all these kind of treatments that they can put on you that will ease the pain and help you get through it. That can give you the skin graft, Brother J.R., to try to help you to live a normal life. Try to make you look as normal as possible. But in hell, there ain't no doctors to give you no pain medication. There ain't no doctors down there that's got no kind of surgery they can do that's going to help you out. In hell, the Bible says you're going to burn forever and ever. You say, oh, preacher, come on. That's old time belief. I'm telling you, I still believe in old time religion, church. Hell ain't got no different. God never changed. Hell ain't never changed. Isaiah said it's opening up his mouth and it's getting larger day by day by day. And it's getting larger by those who scoff at the notion that there is a hell, amen, that there is a place of eternal torment, amen. When you get there, you're not going to get a skin graft. When you get there, doctors are not going to be able to give you medication to stop the pain. Jody the rich man cried out and said, Father Abraham, can you help me? I'm tormented in these flames, amen. I can't stand no more. If you wind up in this place called hell, you'll never find relief. The Bible says in Revelation that the torment, the smoke of their torment ascended forever and ever and ever. There'll be no relief. There'll be nobody to help you. Amen. You'll find no prayers answered in hell. How many of you know as soon as people hit the portals of hell, they begin praying right then? I'm telling you, I believe when a person slips off the face of this earth and they're not fighting with God, when they enter into the portals of hell, then they stay. They may not have prayed a prayer of one, darling. Bless God. They may not have lifted up a prayer while they're here on this earth, but as soon as they hit the portals of hell, they begin to pray. They begin to call on God. And I'm telling you today, they called on God in vain. It did them no good once they left this world and went into the next. The rich man cried out to Father Abraham and said, I pray thee, send Lazarus. I've got five brothers. And I want him to testify. I want him to warn them about this place called hell. I don't want them to come to a place like this. But did his prayer get answered? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Abraham son said, son, you've got to remember in your lifetime you lived well 
In your lifetime, you had all the good things. Everything went your way. And in Lazarus' lifetime, he suffered. And I'm going to tell you something right here at this point. Just because you got money, a rich man don't go to hell because he's rich. That's right. And a poor man don't go to heaven because they're poor. That's right. Hello? That's right. It's still Jesus Christ, rich or poor. <laughs> it's still Jesus. You've got to go by the way of the cross. Amen? Amen. He cried out, and Abraham said, You live good. Lazarus had it rough. Now he's comforted. And now you're tormented. You're reaping your reward. You should have prayed while you had time to pray. Amen. You should have prayed while you was on the face of the earth. But now you've waited too late. Now it's over. Listen to me, people. Once you enter in to this place called hell, you can pray throughout all eternity. And that prayer will never, ever, ever get answered. Amen. You can cry all you want, pray all you want, but that prayer will go no farther. It will hit the, the ceilings of hell, amen, and it will come right back down to you. It will mean absolutely nothing. Bless God, if I knew I wasn't right with the Lord, Brother Garland, I'd be on my knees right now. I'd be calling on God right now to help me and to save my soul. Church, listen to me. I'm telling you right now, don't think we can sit around here and think we're all pious. We can sit around here and think, well, everything's all right. But I wondered this morning, how many good people, how many church people, how many people that claim that they know God has got sin in their life. I've got things going on that they haven't even talked to God about. Knowing one day you're going to have to stand before a righteous judge and be judged of those things. Not realizing that if that thing ain't under the blood, it can be the very thing that cost you your soul. Hello? Come on now. If I knew today that I wasn't right with God, I'd break my neck to find a place to pray. And I'd be calling on him. He said, well, preacher, I don't know. And you better find out because you're supposed to know. Paul said, I'm certain. <laughs> I'm certain, amen, that thing that I give to God, he'll hold it till that day. Amen. You need to know, and I need to know for a fact, for an assurity, that when I leave this earth, my home, my destiny is heaven. Not hell. Not hell. I've made my choice. People can laugh at me. People can mock me all they want to. But I've made my choice. I went the way of the cross and I'm trusting in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only. Not because I'm a preacher. That don't mean one thing. There are going to be preachers in hell. They're they going to be preachers in hell. I promise you that don't mean one thing. But I trusted God and my soul rest in His hand. And I prayed it before I left this earth. I'm not waiting till the last minute, bless God, to get right with the Lord. Amen. I'm going to know it right now. You will not have a prayer answered if you enter into this place called hell. Are you with me? Amen. Number five, and I'm going through as quick as I know that. You'll find no mercy in hell. You won't be there. God has given you mercy today. You live today in the day and the age of grace. I don't have to get up every morning, Sister Martha, and go out and make sacrifices. I don't have to cut up apples. I don't have to lay them in a certain order. I don't think many people understand when they made sacrifices in the Old Testament, you just didn't kill an apple and say, here, God. It didn't work that way. Every piece of wood, every stone had to be laid in perfect order the way God said to lay it. Every piece of meat, everything that you put on that sacrifice had to be laid in a perfect order just the way God said to do it. Amen? If you do it, didn't do it the way God said to do it, then God didn't accept it. Listen to me, church. Think of Cain and Abel. God wasn't looking at Cain and Abel as a person. God was looking at their sacrifice. 
Cain sacrificed God said I'll accept it's worthy he did it the way I said to do it Abel sacrificed he said no you didn't do what I told you to do it ain't laid out the way it's supposed to be laid out amen and God rejected his, uh, his offering his sacrifice well God says this the day that we live I have given you my son his name is Jesus Christ he has now become your sacrifice in order for me to accept you into the kingdom of God you now have to go through the cross you now have to go through the blood of Jesus you have to accept him and him alone as your only sacrifice any other sacrifice any other way God says I reject I reject it. Be as good as you want. Amen. Work as hard as you want. Give all the money you want. But if you've not been to the cross, if you've not had Jesus forgive you of your sins, you are not going to heaven. You will bust. And I don't want to say it that way. You will find yourself in this place called hell. You'll find no mercy today. God is showing us mercy today. Today. God has given us mercy, granting us grace. For every sin we've ever committed, God says, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you. I'll wipe that slate clean. I'll cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. It'll never be remembered against you again. If you'll come through Jesus Christ, I'll forgive you. That's the sacrifice today. That's the mercy we find today, church. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve this mercy that God has offered us. It is a free gift, Ephesians tells us. It's a free gift that God has given to us. And the sad thing is, many, many people turn that gift down. If I were to lay a hundred dollar bill right here, now say anybody that wants it, come and get it. Now, I did this one time with a, I think a five or a ten, and the church was skeptical of me. They were scared. And nobody would get up and go at me. They thought the preacher got something up his sleeve. Finally, a little kid, <laughs> seven, eight years old, got up, come down, got that five dollar bill, put it in his pocket, and went on and sat down. I said, brother, you just got to give. Give to you. That's yours, friend. You know how to pay it back? It was given to you. Anybody in the church could have had it. Anybody could have got it up and went and took that fine. But nobody, they was all, all weary. That's the way they feel about preachers today. All the, we're weary of them, amen. We're weary of them. I'm telling you, all of them ain't bad. This one ain't bad, I promise you. God. But God has offered us that gift. And if we refuse to get up and take that gift, we can blame nobody but ourselves. He'll not take it back. He said, once I give it to you, it's there. Once I give it to you, I'll be with you to the very end. I'll go with you through anything you go through. When all is said and done, amen, at the end of this journey, I'll bring you home. I'll not take that gift back. But many people are weary of this man. It's sad that a seven-year-old kid can understand the concept and grown people can't grab a hold of it. Huh? That's why Jesus said something to little children to come to me. Uh, they understand what I'm saying more than the grown people do. Church is placed all hell. Telling you right now there'll be no mercy once you enter that. Number six, in the end, there'll be no escape in this place. Oh, there. You won't come out. Once you enter there, you're like, this rich man, this story was told. And I believe it's a true story because Jesus calls a name. Any other parable, Jesus would say a certain man or a certain person, but Jesus called the man's name Lazarus. A poor man. Amen? Study it. You'll see what I'm talking about. I believe this story is true and real. 
2,000 years ago, Jesus told them this story. And for 2,000 years, Brother Brian, this rich man has been in hell and he can't get out. He can't get out. 2,000 years, Brother J.R., he's burned. 2,000 years, he hasn't even been able to taste a drop of water. Hey, I'm telling you, you've got your senses there. Your senses are about you when you're there. You feel it. You're able to feel what you're going through. You're able to see what it is that you're going through. He opened his eyes, the Bible says, and he saw Abraham. He saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. Your emotions or your feelings are there. You're aware of everything that's happening around you. He's been there 2,000 years since this story was told, and he's still there. He hadn't come out. He cried, Father Abraham, if you will, say Lazarus. Let him tell my brothers. I got five brothers. I got a sermon I'm going to preach on that too. Hey, you man. I got five brothers that are lost, and I want somebody to testify. Father Abraham said this. You don't understand, son. There's a gulf fixed. Those that want to come over to see you can't do it. And those that want to come from where you are over to see them can't do it. You can't get out. Wherever you wind up, that's where you're going to wind up. If you wind up in heaven, I'm in heaven for eternity. If I wind up in hell, I'm in hell for eternity. And there's no way to get out of it. Amen. We got locked up down here. Somebody say amen. Come on, we know there's some crooks in here. We better act. Amen. Amen. I know you that, honey. I know you're a saint. Amen. And bless God, there's been some of us in here know what it's like to be locked up. But you know what? We got out. The day came when we got out. And we got to enjoy life again. Amen. But in this place called hell, there's no coming out of it. You're there throughout eternity. Going through the agony, going through the pain, going through the suffering, going through the memories. Just think about it, church. If someone in here today is not ready, someone in here today that's not saved, and you reject this thing, you happen to wind up in this place called hell, throughout eternity you're going to hear this message I'm preaching to you over and over and over again. Now, if you want to hear that thing for eternity, stay right where you are. But if you don't want to hear me preach for eternity, get right with God. Make it good. I'm not talking about a little old prayer. I'm talking about getting right with God. Let the Lord save your soul. Amen? Amen? That's what it's about. He said, I come to seek and to save that which is lost. That's what God's purpose is today. You get into this place, there's no way you're coming out. No way you're going to be out of it. And I know there's some that believe you can pray them out. No, you can't. You can't do it. You can't buy any way out, you're there. Amen. If this rich man can speak to us today, I'll guarantee you he'll stand before you and tell you, son, if you, if you know anything, you better know Jesus. If you know anything, you better make it right because you don't want to come to a place like this. For their suffering, torment, no laughter. You know, I got up this morning, and we're coming up the road. And I, I always, when we're driving up the road, I got a little baby locked in the car seat back in, and I'll see up my window down where I'm watching, and watch her talk and chill, dapper. And uh, I went into Clemmer's up here. She knows I stop every time I stop at Clemmer's. I'll get her a bug. She, she knows that's coming, and she was waiting on it. And I got back, and got in the car, looked in my mirror. And bless God, she was just cackling. And she was laughing. Boy, she just knew that love juice was coming. And I just heard her back there. And she was just letting it, letting it go. Just laughing. And I thought, God, in hell. In hell, they won't hear that. They won't be able to hear that. You holding these babies today. Mother, listen to me. There'll be no babies in hell. I'm telling you, these little ones, they ain't nothing of them. 
There'll be no babies there. And there's mamas down there now wishing they could hold their babies. But they're not there. They're there for eternity. Suffering. And I know people say, preacher, you're old fashioned. You know, preach us something good, preach us something that'll make us laugh. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, there is a hell. It is real. Jesus said it was. I believe it. And that settles it. Don't make no never mind what you think. Don't make no never mind what I think. God said it's there. And there's people going there every single day. No way of escape except one. Listen to me. You can do it right now. Jesus made the way. He has paid the price. And through Him we can escape these torments of hell. We can escape. If we take care of it today, we can escape the horrors of hell tomorrow. But if we put it off, if we continue putting it off, pushing it to the side, you know, I always wanted to get a banner made. Since y'all raised all that money, I might get that done. Put them back there as we're going out that door. Did you reject him again today? Did you reject him again today? Friend, I'm telling you, today could be your last day on the face of this earth. You say, preacher, I've got time. You're just trying to scare me. And I'm telling you the truth. The Bible says we're not promised tomorrow. Amen. Amen. We don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know if I'm going to wake up. Hey Amen. I'll go home today and I'll eat me a, a hamburger or a piece of chicken or something, lay down and get a nap. I don't know if I'll wake up to be here tonight or not. And neither do you. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Do you? My prayer today is we make it right now. Singers, y'all come on. We make it right now. We fix it now. You say, well, I'm all right. I, I, I hope y'all, I hope everything in your life is well. Amen. I hope you got everything taken care of. But if there's not, if you don't know, you have an opportunity this morning to make it right. And only you can do it. I promise you today, there ain't nobody in this church going to come up and grab you by the arm and drag you down to an altar. I believe a person, if they get saved, if they come back to the Lord, I believe they ought to come with their own free will. Amen. Nobody has to pull nobody down. Nobody has to drag them. The price has been paid. The sacrifice has been made. We got a way to escape this thing. If we so choose. We'll make a choice this morning that'll probably forever change our life. You'll either walk out of here getting right with God. Or you'll walk out of here putting him off again. And who knows what tomorrow is going to hold for you. Who knows if somebody on the other line is going to get a call and says, you know what? So and so. Hold on just a minute. Give me a minute. Just a minute, please. Let me tell you something. Somebody called me just the other day. A young man that came to this church. Y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. A young man that used to come to this church came in, sat for a while, went back out, went to live in the way he wanted to live, doing what he wanted to do. One day he was he was uh, keeping his children. One day everything was going well, and they came in one day, just this week. What day was it? Like Thursday, Friday? Just this week, I believe it was, and he hung himself. Hello, hung himself. Some of you church members know if I call his name, you'll know exactly who it is I'm talking about. A man gets desperate when he takes his own life. You know, he survived. Right now he's in a self-induced car. They're trying to get him back, but he's not all that. You don't know what tomorrow is going to hold for you. You have no clue what you're going to hear on the other end of that phone. You don't know if it'll be your loved one. They don't know if it'll be you. I could be heading home today. Bless God, and y'all come in tonight, and there could be somebody else standing here saying, well, the preacher pulled out here, 2974, got hit by a truck, and it killed him. Killed his family. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. 
We act like we've got forever to live. We act like we can do what we want, live like we want, and just go on living forever and ever and ever. But the day is coming when God said, I'm going to judge your sin. The day is coming when God said, I'll have the final word. And if you haven't come through the cross of Jesus Christ, you will find yourself in the portals of hell. Amen. You will be there. Amen. It ain't no joke. It ain't something made up. The Bible declares that this place is real. And if you don't believe it, don't change it one bit. But friend, I'm going to tell you today, if you're sitting here and you know you're not right, you're sitting here today and you know there's some things that you haven't got taken care of, I urge you today, you best do it today. But you don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow or not. God's grace is here today. When you leave this earth, it's gone. There'll be no mercy. There'll be no escape. We'll make a decision one way or the other. It can be a decision that will change your life or it can be a decision that will destroy your life. But it will be yours. And you're not going to stand before God and say, the preacher didn't tell me. You know. The Bible says we know our sins. We know what they are. You're not going to stand before God and say, I didn't, I didn't know that God. You know. You know. And we'll answer. Stand with me this morning. Y'all play. Three head bowed, please.